Welcome back, everyone, to Red Dusk. I'm your host, Mr. America Lover, as you all hopefully know by now. But we're hanging out, we're having a good time, and, uh, yeah, uh, Africa's falling apart, but that's pretty normal for Africa. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are doing the African theater. We're led by Donald Trump, that one presidential guy. Um, Africa is still a developing continent, with a huge place for opportunity. Still reeling from decolonization, many nations are left still left in conflicts which we can benefit from by supporting allies and establishing friendly regimes, but then we're going to have reformists. Perot's spear has won the day, giving three cheers for the return of reform through cheers for the rise of a third party. The reformers have won the day and now behind a successful leader, the party can safely say it's centralized behind a cause of bringing America into a new age, to embrace the spirit of greatness and to bring forth the new dawn of American age. So, um, I know one of the comments from yesterday was saying that, you know, America isn't really ready to be played. I mean, it has generic-ish type of content right now, um, which is not wrong. And I will play America again, but I was really impressed with that. You can get Jeb Bush eventually, um, and eventually maybe Donald Trump will be president in the update eventually once the devs get to it, but you know, we'll wait and see. Um, let's see, NATO, we can close out of that one for now. U.S. Congress, don't really, oh, what is this? The Campaign Finance Reform Act. One of the main promises that united both wings of the Reform Party is action to be done in regards towards campaign funding and lobbying, a significant issue that has prevented third parties from cementing popularity within U.S. elections. This bill will forbid large-scale corporations from giving large donations to any parties in both campaigns and congressional decision-making. The future of a bill will be decided after discussions in the House and Senate. During this time, we'll be able to get under support for it. So, it should probably sound like we, if we want to do any of these, we should probably get some more political power. But yeah, we're led by Donald Trump. He's here to help save the day. Save America, you know. Uh, like normal. The Medical Marijuana Usage Act. If we want aid in the end of war on drugs, we must adhere to the needs of our nation's doctors when it comes to medical drugs. This bill will allow for all hospitals to use marijuana for medical and recreational uses, along with helping the government in future marijuana uh, decriminalization efforts. The Progressive Wage Act. If we want to ensure the continued growth of wages and paychecks for our country workers, we must combine the growth of inflation with the growth of wages. The Progressive Wage Act mandates that minimum wages shall increase or decrease according to national inflation levels, ensuring that workers are paid a finite amount no matter the economic circumstances. An available Housing Act. <clears throat> it has been far too long since. The federal government has been stepping in to fill up the gaps in the housing market, which has become more focused on the larger banks rather than the average consumer looking to buy a home. This act will begin a new string of federal invested housing products across the nation in order to ensure available housing for a growing population. You know, it'd be nice if the government cared that much about us instead of, like, allowing corporations to buy tons and tons of housing, but whatever. I wouldn't mind... Maybe doing... I don't know what this is like now. Because I do want to pass stuff. They're unfriendly, which means they're probably not going to support us. Um, I want to save more political power first. Senate support's good. House support's pretty decent. Reform party, 201. House support. Oh, I guess we have four rogue senators from our party. Or four representatives. Four house representatives against us. 46 is not bad. Senate support's not bad. Uh, President Donald Trump, of course, majority party and reform party. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe campaign refi you know, finance reform act, but I just don't want to lose any more political power. So we're going to do the reformists, and we'll have a get more political power, and we'll, with the left majority. After the elections and counting of the votes, the left obtained the majority now, it promptly took office in the government. Now, with the election that finally took place, the time has come to keep the promises made to the people, carrying forward the plans presented in the leftist agenda. Cool. It is 2001. It's not February, March. It's March, not February anymore. And uh, something's going to happen later this year, so. And we're not in any other nation meddling in anyone else's affairs, unfortunately. Because that's what how I like my America. A little bit meddlesome. And what else we got here? We are severely lacking in resources. Oh, God. Oh, planes, planes, planes. That's fine. Oh, here. Oh, sure, why not? Sure, why not? Really focusing on that navy there. Even though we're probably never going to even use it. Ah. Nothing like a good old election year. CPV elected new general secretary. Communist Party of Vietnam. We're a bit of a reformist nation. But the left majority. Because uh, we got to isolate the Soviet tyrants. None shall go hungry. Work with unions. Ah, remove the tapped Hartley Act. Uproot corporate weeds. Erase po you know, Donald Trump can just erase poverty. We all know this. Uh, refresh Air Force budget. Nothing that gives us more political power, though, which I don't like. We definitely need more political powers. Uh, Naval XP, United States Air Force, Asian Theater, Daily Command Power, Friends of the Cold War, 
Uh, we got this one ready to go just in case. We don't need that one yet. Cambodia's in a political crisis. You know, just in case, let's unlock this first. Asia Theater. Asia is one of the biggest continents, with billions calling it their home. Recently, Asia has become more and more heated. Tensions are rising. Conflicts are in the beginning as we speak. We need our police this region to uphold the values of democracy and defend our allies from the dictatorships that prepare to invade them and take away their freedoms. So, before we do anything here, we're going to save. I want to see what happens. If we can get enough, you know, preempt party support from other parties and make them friendly to us, will they support us? Because this will destroy how much political power we get, so. Let's improve campaign finance. Uh, that be, sounds like it's going to be difficult to get any sort of support from the Republicans and Democrats for this one. Uh, war on drugs, progressive wage. Available housing. Well, I'm going to do this one first. Let's see what happens. We got 70 days. Uh, gain Senate Republican support. A small part of the party's members will support us in getting this bill passed due to their unfriendly attitude. So all the party's members will support us in getting this bill passed due to their loyal attitude. Gain reform support. Alright, so now... Who? Bill fails. Re approve Republican attitude. Hmm. Well, if we do that... Oh, it takes 200 days for that. Interesting. I'm glad I saved before this. Small part, because they're not very friendly. Well, if we do this one, because this takes a lot of political power. For the Senate, hopefully we'll get more support there. 35 days. In the House. 46, that still won't be enough. <clears throat> For the House, that still won't be enough either. How small is small? That's a real question. We're going to lose political power anyway, so... Uh, how many Republicans are there? Well, we should probably get some more Democratic support in the Senate. And we'll see what happens. How support there are more Democrats in the House? Well, we can't get that. So, let's see what happens. I want to see what happens after all this stuff. So, with the left majority, Asia Theater, and then I post that... I want to erase poverty, so isolate the Soviet tyrants. We'll make it to a point of diplomatic isolate and defeating, or defeating the Soviet tyrants throughout our presidency. Aim to work with other democratic and democratic socialist nations in order to gain an edge over the Soviets in the world. It would be hard to build up this image, however, as their past actions have resulted in a sour American image abroad, particularly with audiences in Central and South America and Africa. We're assured that we'll work on salvaging a reputation so we can both right the wrong, wrongs of past administrations as well as finish out the Soviet authoritarianism. That's right. We are a left-wing nation in America. Nothing yet. Give it a few days and see what happens. Roll the dispatch. You can have infantry equipment. It's fine. All right. So after that, fifty-five two hundred one. It'll still fail because you need two hundred and one there. So interesting. So we're gonna do this maybe a little later, and then kind of go back and uh, make sure that we're not doing that. Trump's inauguration. The crowd was restless. The cheers and the cries of joy unrelenting as wave upon wave of reformists came to support their president in the aftermath of a resounding victory. It was hard fought and there were many roads still to travel, but for the time being it seemed Jubilee was on the agenda rather than worries of the future. The elections were over and the nation was chopping at the bit to get things swinging with the new president. It was a warm day enough, even for January, and the buzzing of the crowd made it seem all that much more when Donald Trump stepped out of the presidential limo. Quail skulking behind, walker in hand, ready to see his successor be sworn in. When they arrived at the podium, the oath went with, by with haste, and the newly sworn in commander in chief gave a solemn and steadfast remarks on a tremendous occasion. We, the citizens of America, are now joined in a great national effort to rebuild our country and restore its promises of, for all of its people. Together, we will determine the course of America and the world for many, many years to come. We'll face challenges, we'll confront hardships, but we'll get the job done. Today's ceremony, however, has a very special meaning because today we're not merely transferring power from one administration to another, from one party to another, we're transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. We're making America great again. Of course we would go with that. That's funny. Remnants of the Cold War. During the heated Cold War, and we mean this as a time before the USSR turned into a fledging rum state, Africa was a heated point of contention. The decolonization that took place wasn't the most stable, often leading to issues within the ethnic, ethnic borders and conflicts, whose effects still last us day in shape of many wars across the continent. Um, we're still not getting very much at all. Oh, we're improving Republicans. I should have done improve, improve Democrat values, or whatever it said there, so. So we're RCD. I guess we could. You get a lot of army XP, which is pretty nice. That's fine. It's only seven days. Support RCD. 
After the collapse of the US friendly Zaire, due to magnitude of reasons, the victors established a new Congo aimed at uniting the country. This wouldn't last long, however, as different interests led to yet another civil war. The rally of Congolese democracy is a faction of anti government figures seeking to establish a democratic Congo aligned with the West. It is crucial that we support these elements to have a friendly ally and control of one of the largest African nations. Balance fighter, very nice. Strike bomber, sure. Just gotta pump money into the military industrial complex. That's right, my friends. Because I want to pass at least one thing of legislation before the midterms show up again. So I said the tyrant because I definitely want to raise poverty. Because America can, Donald Trump alone can erase poverty supposedly. The impoverished are downtrodden and lower class. Those in poverty have been the hardest hit by the nation's great disasters, and the ones that receive the bare scrapes, uh, or bare scraps during a nation speaks. The Americans who make up this group come from all straps of society. Immigrants, the unemployed, struggling families, and of all the other branches of American life live in this economic pothole. It's a travesty that these people have been continuously receiving the short end of the stick by past governments. It's now time and key to the success of our democracy for prop up these fine citizens and erase the scourge of poverty in our country. That's right. Donald Trump will solve all of our poverty issues. As we isolate the giant, as we sip our honor decaf coffee. Hey, missiles. Just keep sending equipment, it doesn't matter. In real life, yeah, it would matter a lot, but for us, nah. Boop, 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 we did earlier, but whatever. Look at that Navy, keep, keep going. Nice. Pretty big malice uh, stability there. Do we have enough uh, rubber? No, we don't. We have some oil reserves, but you know I still want more roads than anything else. Boop, boop, boop. Ah, look at that! Oh, the Soviets doing just Soviet things. Get more political power with this one, it's not bad. But none shall go hungry in Donald Trump's America. As we already know, we're the richest, most powerful country in the world, but the majority of the population is average. In terms of salary and part of the population, especially in some neighborhoods and our states, and poor and can't afford basic living. And as all this, the leftist agenda is decided to reach out to our people and try in every way to reduce poverty. Mostly by lowering the food prices of the markets and distribution of food stamps. Oh, my bad. Most of it's a tragedy. <clears throat> As Andrew Card investigated the morning routine on September 11th in Sarasota, Florida, a whisper of distress pierced the ear. News trickled in of a plane crashing into one of the World Trade Center towers in New York City. Initially perceived as a dreadful accident, Andrew and those around him speculated the cause, pondering the fate of those still aboard the ill-fated aircraft. And the hush corridors of uncertainty. I saw its veer to the passengers, imagining the terror they must have endured as the plane ascended towards its tragic destiny. Despite the initial assumption of mechanical failure, a gnawing sense of foreboding gripped this conscience. Then, in a heartbeat, the grim reality crystallized in a second plane, another commercial jet liner, barreled into the second tower, erasing any doubt of intent or coincidence. Al-Qaeda's Al 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 specter loomed large in his mind, a haunting reminder of the 1993 attack on American soil. With a heavy heart and weighty sense of duty, I was resolved to relay the harrowing news to the president. It was a moment fraught with the gravity of the history, a defining instant in the knowledge of the nation. Approaching the president with measured steps and deliberate tone, a second plane hit the second tower. America's under attack. The Eagle's been struck. There's attack on the World Trade Center. The world is both shocked and horrified today at recent news, with both the Twin Towers being hit by hijacked passenger airplanes, along with the Pentagon being hit and a plane crash being reported in Pennsylvania. The results of these attacks have been devastating. So far, almost 2,000 fatalities have been reported, with the number expected to grow as more bodies are found in the rubble. With the American public in uproar, the President of the U.S. has sworn revenge on the perpetrators of this attack, promising to deliver justice for the lives lost. International reactions have been similar, with both Western and Eastern states uniting in a single cause against evil. Regardless, it seems that the events seen on September 11, 2001 will be echoed throughout the foreseeable future. A date to li forever live in infamy. So in this case, it, it, was it an inside job? I don't know. Did anyone take it on insurance policy? Uh, anyways, addressing the greatest disaster. <clears throat> the TVs across America switched on one by one. From the east to the west coast, tens of millions of Americans all tuned in to listen to their president address a tragedy that struck the nation. On a televised speech from the Oval Office, he's going to speak to the entirety of the now recovering United States. The C-SPAN broadcast began, and the face of the president was shown to America and the world. Good evening, America. I'm Donald Trump addressing you all today in the time of mourning. <coughs> a few hours ago, our nation came under attack by terrorist hijackers who took control of our four passenger airplanes and flew them into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and then fueled in Pennsylvania. People we once knew dear to our hearts, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, were taken away from us by the hands of evil. In Dallas, a bar filled with weary attendees, 
All watched the president speak, the number of lives lost in the number of thousands, with the brave citizens of New York still recovering from the devastation. May all of our prayers go to the communities who are struck by this act of terror. The victims of this attack were everyday Americans just like anybody else. Officer workers, policemen, firefighters. In Miami, a shaking couple and the two children were watching TV in their home. I know that many of you are grieving with the loss of a friend, a loved one, or someone close in your life. Many more of you are scared, scared of what comes next. You might be at risk if you still are still safe in this country. Rest assured, I'll do everything I can in my power to ensure that there will never be, nor will be, another tragic day such as this for as long as I serve you, the American people. In St. Louis, young kids and teens, all students, watch the broadcast from their school TVs. These malicious acts, though they have been taking their toll, cannot come close to striking an dent into the spirit of the American people. Already the goodness and determination of American hearts are rebuilding themselves, working hand in hand in these hard times. Our core values of liberty, freedom, equality, and progress will serve as never-ending light, untouched by the vices of just injustice, no matter how hard they may hit. Across the world, whether it be a home in England, a train station in Japan, a radio shop in South Africa, all heard the words, the search is still underway for the perpetrators of the attack. However, once these enemies of democracy are found and located, the full strength and capacity of the American people will deliver just once for all, I promise you. Never again. That's right. Can you imagine President Trump was president during, like, 9-11? Pursuit of shadows. Amidst the hollow halls of the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, a sense of urgency had th hung thick in the air as the two figures convened in a dimly lit meeting room. Across the polished mahogany table sat William Chambers, a seasoned U.S. policymaker, his countenance etched with a resolve as he faced off against Thomas Reynolds, a high ranking CIA operative tasked with navigating the murky waters of counterterrorism. Tell us we need to discuss our strategy regarding Al Qaeda in Afghanistan, Chambers began, as well as carrying away to solemn purpose. Reynolds nodded gravely, his steely gaze meeting Chambers' unwavering stare. Indeed, William. Our recent interactions with the agency have shed light on the need for a comprehensive approach to combating the looming threat of Al-Qaeda. Leaning forward, Chambers clasped his hands together, his brow furrowed in contemplation. What additional resources and authorities does the CIA require to pursue Al-Qaeda with utmost vigor, he inquired, his tone tinged with a sense of urgency. Reynolds paused, considering his words carefully before responding. We recommend bolstering support for the Northern Alliance and other factions opposed to Taliban governance, he began, as was measured yet resolute. Furthermore, we advocate for providing assistance to those capable of capturing Al-Qaeda leaders, thereby disrupting their network and weakening their hold on Afghanistan. Chambers nodded thoughtfully, absorbing Reynolds' recommendations with keen interest. I see, he muttered. His mind already racing with implications of such a strategy. Uh, we must act decisively to send the tide of extremism before it engulfs the region in chaos. As the meeting drew to a close, Chambers and Reynolds exchanged a solemn nod, their shared commitment to safeguard the national security resonating within the hollowed confines of the CIA's halls. Proceed with caution, Thomas. Their actions must be calculated and precise. An ultimatum to the Taliban within the hollowed confines of the Oval Office. Tensions crackled in the air as the U.S. National Security Council convened in the aftermath of the New York attacks. Around the polished table, council members engaged in heated debate, their voices rising and falling in the cacophony of discord. Amidst the chaos, President Donald Trump sat in stoic silence, his brow furrowed in deep contemplation as he absorbed the myriad perspectives clamoring for attention. The weight of the world rested upon his shoulders and the gravity of the situation impalpable palpable and furrow of this brow. As the bickering intensified, the president raised a hand, commanding the room's attention with a single gesture. Enough, he declared, his voice cutting through with a tumult like a blade. We find ourselves at a crossroads, faced with a grave threat to our nation's security. His words hung heavy in the air, a solemn reminder of the stakes at hand. Military action against Al-Qaeda and the Taliban is inevitable, he continued, his tone resolute. But before we resort to force, let us extend one final opportunity for peace. A hush fell over the room as the president outlined his plan, his words imbued with the weight of authority. I'll issue an ultimatum to the Taliban, he declared, his voice carrying the unmistakable cadence of determination. They will be given a choice, hand over Osama bin Laden and dismantle Al-Qaeda's terrorist network or face the full force of our military might. As the implications of a decision sank in, a sense of solemn resolve settled over the room. In the pivotal moment, amidst a chaos of uncertainty, the president had set the course for a nation on the brink of war. And in the wake of unspeakable tragedy, may this ultimatum serve as a beacon of hope in a pursuit of justice and security. Is Dick Cheney vice president still? Is that how the Reform Party won, with having Dick here? Um, Y'all ain't looking so good right now. The Pashtun Code. Inside the war room of the White House, tensions hung thick in the air as President Donald Trump and his advisors awaited the response to the ultimatum issued to the Taliban. The weight of anticipation pressed upon them, each moment stretching into an eternity as they braced themselves for the fate of a nation hanging in the balance. With bated breath, a message from Mullah o Mohammed Omar, the enigmatic leader of the Taliban, finally arrived. As they scanned the words before them, a sense of grim resignation settled over the room. The Taliban's refusal to hand over Osama bin Laden reverberated through the chamber, a stark reminder of the challenges they let, that lay ahead. We cannot comply with your demands. The message read, the words dripping with defiance. Osama bin Laden is protected by the traditional Pashtun laws of hospitality, and we cannot betray our customs to satisfy the demands of foreign powers. They have made their decisions, and so have we. Look at that. The Middle Eastern chess game. Graveyard of Empires. Oh, look at this. 9-11 has happened. Add Afghanistan proxy event. 
for entry. Form the Northern Afghanistan Liaison Team. Cannons and Volunteers. Not bad. Attacking against minor countries. More initiative. Terrain XP... X, terrain traits XP gain. More coordination. Afghanistan is more or less precisely the Afghan people, which have never tolerated their invaders and occupiers. But fight relentlessly and only stop with their forces that they deem to be their enemies leave the country. That's what we'll have to deal with. A terrorist attack has recently occurred on our beloved homeland, and we believe that some of our later leaders reside somewhere in Afghanistan until waiting until we give up searching for them. We won't stop until we have those monsters behind and captured behind bars. That being said, we have artillery here. Um, do we have enough already? No. I'm just gonna go 26 for now, it's fine. Barakstan. It's a lot of time. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. <sighs> That's right. Donald Trump just erased poverty. A resolution is being presented in the North Atlantic Council. American delegations have presented a resolution titled Invocation of Article 5 to the North Atlantic Council. We must determine our voting stands in this resolution within the next three weeks. For further details, we can refer to the documentation of the North Atlantic Council. What is this? Coalition presence, 10%. Taliban holdup, 89%. Form the Northern Afghanistan Liaison Team. Withdraw from Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden is dead. Wipe the Taliban off the face of the earth? That'd be kind of cool. Coalition 93%. Intelligence points, 27 Coalition, coalition cohesion. The cohesion of all coalition forces acting in Afghanistan. Taliban cohesion. Huh. We do not support your war. As the exit of the grocery store, Sam and his father were met with chants and protest signs filling the streets of San Francisco. Sam's eyes widened, took in the sea of people, their voices rising in unison against the looming specter of war. Banners waved defiantly in the breeze, slogans painted boldly across their surfaces. Dad, look at all these people, Sam said, his voice tinged with excitement and determination. We have to join them. We can't let the government just go to war without listening to us. His father glanced in the direction of the protests, his expression unreadable as he absorbed the steam form. It's a futile gesture, son. He, uh, remarked, his voice imbued with resignation, they're just doing shouting in the wind. No amount of protests will change the course of action or set in motion. Oh, this is different regions here. Oh, okay. Look at that. <clears throat> Sam bristled at his father's words, his useful idealism clashing against the weight of pragmatism, but we have to do something, he protested, his voice filling with frustration. We're just gonna sit back and watch as they send people off to die. His father sighed heavily, placing a comforting hand on his son's shoulder. I understand your anger, son, he said, his voice gently affirmed, but you have to understand, the higher-ups have already made their minds. We can only hope to navigate the storm as best we can, and right now are prior to get home. These protests, they can turn ugly fast. As he made the way home to the throngs of demonstrators, Sam felt a sense of frustration and helplessness gnawing at him. How could his father send idly by while the country hurled towards yet another war? But his heart sank at his father's next words, a grim reminder of the weight of history repeating itself. This war, son, his father murmured, his voice barely audible over the roar of the crowd, will be your generation's Vietnam. As they were hurried home, the echoes of protests fading into the distance, Sam couldn't shake the feeling that the battle for peace was just beginning. Work of the Soviets. Soviet foot. Combined operations. United against evil. I think we'll take care of it. We can be trusted with dismantling the terror cells that are currently holed up somewhere in Afghanistan. We'll now begin military operations in the name Operation Enduring Freedom and root out the scum that is terrorism and terrorism. We won't be invaders. More like liberators. Well, everyone, welcome to Afghanistan. We're doing all right. But, uh, you know, just like how I like my Middle Eastern wars, we got to begin our bombings. Uh, to soften up a majority of the enemy combatants, we will begin Operation Crescent Wind. A bombing operation that will disrupt the defenses of the Taliban and pave the way for our heroic troops that will finish them off. We expect positive results as the terrorists seem to be ill-prepared against well. However, they know the terrain and they have a clear advantage of that. We adjusted our battle plans already in consideration of this fact. And find this guy named Bin Laden. Osama Bin Laden is a vile individual being heavily involved in the terrorist attacks we conducted on U.S. soil. We'll find him and he'll be brought to justice. If he resists, however, he will not make it. We'll look through every nook and cranny and no stone shall be left unturned. That's right. Um, I kind of want to do our boys abroad, though. We have thousands of our soldiers stationed in foreign lands on military bases. 
They are to show our allies that we will always stand beside them to assure them of our support, however. Our problem plagues our boys. The equipment is not quite up to the standards. How has this been a massive problem that demands an answer now? Or this has been a massive problem. How much should we reform the equipment that they are using? So. That's nice. we're all heading down here. Ooh, can we reinforce? Ooh, that's not good. Um, you know, we'll do our boys abroad first then. We don't need too much. We just need some. I hate that we can't reinforce. Because we don't have a port. That's so dumb. And we're doing okay so far. If I have to use some funky things here, then so be it. Oh, airstrikes in central region. 5% chance of causing civilian casualties. Gives coalition pressure, presence in the central region moderately. Northern, western, southern, eastern, central. Northern region is nice. Reduce the Taliban cohesion lightly. I don't know. We'll just bomb the entire area. Why not? Uh, nothing else is going on in NATO. Counter isolationist elements would be nice, but I mean, it doesn't really matter too much right now. And then we have this thing going on too. So, um, it looks like we're going to pass a campaign finance reform act. Where we're losing lose point one political power every day, but you get ten percent more. So I'm okay with that. Party popularity, stability modifier goes up, and better, worse ideology drift defense. So we're going to have to actually drift a little more. So we'll see. I want to see what they do first. The Canadians are moving in. The Brits are moving in. We're doing all right. Our Navy's doing quite well. We got some more artillery and whatnot. Love the arty. Nice. And Europe becomes a uh, currency. All right. Good job, Euro. And we're going and destroying equipment. It's all right. As long as this passes, hey, a first piece of legislation is passed within a year of us becoming, uh, again, the presidency. The bill passes. Look at that. After much discussions and negotiations in Congress, the bill proposed by our government has passed through both the House and Senate by a majority. With the bill passed, its positive effects on our state will soon be helpful for all. Good job, everybody. Slightly more political power. Um, what's the next one we should do? Progressive wage. Medical marijuana. That sounds like more business opportunities. So maybe the Republicans would get on this, but maybe not. They're, uh, or housing. We want houses, marijuana, or progressive wage. I think housing would be a good thing to do. So let's open it up. And we need to gain reform support. And it's going to hurt us there. So now, after we do that, we actually might not have enough for either side. Crap. Uh, hopefully we can get... Ooh. We have 70 days. I don't know if we can get enough political power. Uh, if that's the case, maybe that was a bad idea to choose that one. Or we just don't do a focus. We can do that one too. Um, we want to gain Republican support because they don't hate us. They're just like, whatever. Um, with 46, we definitely need at least some Republican support here. Yeah. And now we're going to lose some, a little bit of political power, whatever. There you go. Get in there too. Nice. Should be able to do that pretty easily. You all hold. Uh, it looks like they're moving in anyway, so that's fine. In the meantime, I would rather uh, station in us uh, maybe up north. We'll be fine. As long as we destroy the divisions, that's what really matters most, in my opinion. Alright. Our boys abroad, very good. What's the next one after that one? Limited modifications. More break than organization. Armor attack and attack. Double armor division attack. Face the future. More speed attack and less defense. Advanced equipment. No bit advancements. Um, I don't really want to hurt our defense. But let's face it. If we commit ourselves enough to our soldiers abroad, they won't likely be able to stand against the Soviet tyranny if we ever bear if the bear ever wakes up from its slumber. We must reform the equipment they're given for this very reason. New millennium calls for new equipment in our soldiers' hands. Whether they are home or in foreign locations, defending democracy abroad. That's right. Our soldiers in foreign military bases deserve more modern firearms from us, which we will attempt to give them. 
More advanced weaponry makes them more effective in battle, and that's what any soldier needs to be. We have failed our soldiers if we are unable to provide them with what they desperately need from us. That's right. Can I get enough political power in a couple of days? Ooh, this is not good. That's fine. Yeah, that's stuff. Crud muffins if we can't get that done. It'll fail. God dang it, this is so dumb. This really needs to be worked, but we'll keep going on. We'll do all this stuff too. Um, find Ben Laden. No shall go hungry. As we already know, we are the richest and most powerful country in the world, but the majority of the population is average. In terms of salary, and part of the population, especially in some neighborhoods of our states, are poor and can't afford a basic living. And as all this, the us agenda is decided to reach out to our people and try in every way to reduce poverty, mostly by lowering the food prices in the markets and distribution of food stamps. And refresh, refresh Air Force budget. That's right. Our great homeland in the recent period has undergone numerous reforms, especially those in the political field, with the majority of the left and now also in the military field. Although the pride of the U.S. Army is the infantry, especially the Marines, the supremacy of that Air Force has always provided to our boys in the front should not be underestimated. Therefore, to maintain our supremacy in the skies, the government has decided to primarily refresh the USA Air Force budget. And the bill passes. Of course. Why would it not pass? We just passed the bill for more housing, so we're doing pretty well. Now we've got to save up more political power. Um, house support's not bad, but we won't have that for everything. Uh, we gotta save save up and continue to. Oh, look at all that. Well, southern and western regions. The northern region we don't need to do any airstrikes in. Um, increased coalition presence. Oh, is there any really point to? And the northern region moderately. Uh, the western region maybe. I don't know. Let's continue going on. Nice job, nice job. We have no supply, but nice job. We have a close air support. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. And we're here just to improve ourselves more, too. More HP for the tanks? Sure. Don't want to use them in the mountains, but yeah, sure, why not? Uh, get more convoys, I guess. Good stuff, good stuff. Hopefully Jack Keen has learned a lot. Let's put these guys in half. Good. Look at all that. Become a mountaineer too. Weapons advancements. Honored and humble. That's right. After choosing to go through our forms, we can conflict and declare that our boys in foreign lands are better equipped to deal with any situation and to defend themselves. They're much more formidable in force now. No one should mess with them. Yeah, should. Good job, guys. Help them out up here, and help them out down here. My boys, we've taken over Iraq. Iraq. Uh, I mean, uh, if Afghanistan. That's right. Taliban cohesion. Northern Alliance emerges victorious in Afghanistan. Look at that. And so Phoenix rises from its ashes. The Guerre wins elections, huh? So, does this get any better or worse? Because Southern region, it should hopefully get better. Western region should get better. The Taliban cohesion is still pretty high. We're honored and humble, dude. Fine, Ben Laden. Yeah. We're brought to justice. Less than 50? That's good. Let's see what happens. Um, we got a lot of stuff here. Destroyer, tax sub. Thousands, carrier, carrier hull. Yeah, just some guns. No one cares. 99 to destroy a hole. Cruiser hole. 1940s battleship hole. Yeah, probably not. That baby's assault ship. What is that? Oh, we can't upgrade this? Oh, that's a darn. Oh, this one we can upgrade this one, though. Oh, Reagan class? Holy crap. I mean, are we going to even use the Navy at all? What is this? Service to air missiles? Better SAMs? What is this? Flat deck. Hangar. Another hangar. Cruise missiles. The 
some bigger deck size. This all got for twos. I guess. Well, let's be one in Afghanistan. Now we're gonna find Bin Laden. Military coup in France, look at that. Oh. Well, increase the coalition presence. Everything we do now doesn't really find do too much, and then wipe the Taliban out of the face of the earth. Uh, after wiping the floor with the Taliban, uh, terrorist scum, they haven't fully given up and are defeated in the fields of battle, but if they employ hit and run tactics on our troops, then they have a fighting chance. Canada, these scums of the earth, will fight and start to develop and build up Afghanistan. If the Afghan populace supports us, then we can drive the animals out of their homes and bury them six feet below. Hunt for Bin Laden. Status alive. Raid compound. Location unknown. Weekly Afghan proxy entry intelligence. Search for Bin Laden. It takes a lot. So. There you go. I think we deserve a nuclear reactor. Oh, look, 100%. Look at that. That's nice. Because I want more rubber, too. Well, we passed two pieces of legislation already, which I think is pretty nice. Pretty nice overall. Nation building in Afghanistan with the defeat of the Taliban. Uh, we're now faced with a tremendous task of rebuilding Afghanistan in our hands. This nation building will entail more than mere governmental change, face changes. Rather, we'll ship Afghanistan in reviews. Afghanistan will get a taste of democracy. Well, what really? Form the International Security Assistance Force. Establish your ISAF to lead international efforts in training the Afghan National Security Forces. And rebuild in Afghanistan's key institutions to stabilize the region to counter Taliban insurgency. Unlock decisions regarding the improvement of Afghan National Security Forces. So, what is this? Oh, God. Active coalition troops. It represents a combined number of troops contributed by Operation Enduring Freedom and the International Security Assistance Force. This count will decrease every 30 days as coalition forces complete their tours of duty. And it's only us, of course. Coalition casualties consist of those killed or wounded in battle. Is this? ANSF fielded troops. It represents a combined total of the Army, Air Force, and Police Maneuver, and Manpower, Police Manpower within the Afghan National Security Forces. Intelligence. They send. F is in inadequate condition. A comprehensive measure of the ANSF's training quality and effectiveness. Factors affecting it 5% is operational readiness, 5% training proficiency, 5% logistical support, 5% command and control. Effects on us, oh boy. Effects on the Afghan army. What is this? Taliban insurgents project 44% strength across country. Support for the coalition forces stand at 20%. That's not good. Reconstruction progress is at 0%. So. This is going to be the graveyard of our empire, oh my god. Where's Bin Laden? Um, the Mid Middle Eastern chess game? The Middle East is an area riddled with conflicts and people settled in the region. It isn't known for the best of things, but an undeniable fact is that they hold a large amount of valuable resources that most major powers would want to get their hands on. We're talking about black oil. While oil is an important aspect of the region, it's also full of problematic groups of people. Dictators and terrorist scum, it's all in our best interest to work towards peace in the region. The second battle of Yongpeng? Oh boy. How are we going to counter China? No, we're getting closer to one political power a day, which is not bad. I don't think I can send you guys... Uh, right-wing nationalists versus right-wing nationalists. Come on, right-wing nationalists. Do better. Alright. Deploy additional forces. We lose stability. A thousand more troops come from our manpower. What is this? Oh, look at that. Okay, so now they have more troops. For British, German, French, Canadian, and a whole bunch of other people. Nice. Even Luxembourg sent people. Look at that. Three, oh, God. Three. Uh, three of us. No. That's for more ISAF troop contributions. Request additional troop commitments for ISAF members and nations to bolster the coalition's efforts in Afghanistan. Show ANSF decisions. Conduct operational drills. Regular schedule and execute operational drills to enhance ANSF's readiness and response capabilities. Enhance training programs. Continuously update and improve training programs to ensure the ANSF remains proficient in various combat scenarios. It's slightly more expensive. 
improve logistical networks. Invest in better logistical networks and ensure our city flow of supplies and equipment to ANSF movements or no, no, units. Strengthen command structures. Develop and reinforce command structures and enhance ANSF's strategic planning and leadership effectiveness. Develop rural infrastructure. Develop one on developing infrastructure in rural areas to ensure support and accessibility throughout the country. You know what? I don't mind losing a few cities for this. You get political power. Coalition support goes up. Better reconstruction progress. Upgrade the Afghan life industry. Invest in upgrading existing industrial complexes to boost their productivity and efficiency. Yeah, okay. Up build arms factories. Build new arms factories. Increase the production of weapons and equipment for the ANSF. Expand manufacturing capabilities. Uh, expand it uh, in the country to support the production of military and civilian goods. Domestic stabilization initiatives. Implement uh, initiatives aimed at enhancing domestic stability and by addressing internal challenges and strengthening the governance. Anti corruption campaign. Launch a comprehensive anti corruption campaign to reduce kleptocracy and restore public trust. There's a lot of political power. Uh, agricultural support programs. Provide financial and technical support to Afghan farmers to boost agriculture and reduce Taliban influence. Where are some counterinsurgency programs? Execute a more focused multi day raid on the suspected Taliban sanctuary aiming to dismantle the command structures. Bomb Taliban caves. Conduct targeted bombing campaigns against known Taliban cave complexes to collapse their hideouts and disrupt the operations. Cave clearance. Deploy specialized infantry to clear Taliban occupied caves. Ensure no insurgent elements remain and seizing valuable intelligence. Counter narcotics operations. Intensify efforts to eradicate poppy cultivation and disrupt the opium trade of weakened Taliban funding. Night raids. Conduct targeted raids on Taliban hideouts to disrupt their operations and gather intelligence. Village stabilization patrols. Deploy, deploy patrols to secure villages, engage with local leaders, and build trust within the community. Enhance checkpoint security. Increase the number of effectiveness of checkpoints to intercept insurgent movements and supplies. Psychological operations. Conduct psychological operations to undermine Taliban propaganda and sway local support away from the insurgents. Oh, this is a giant mess, isn't it? We'll do as much as we can. How many insurgents do they have? Oh god, we've only had so many, huh? Bin La we found Bin Laden! The man who conspired and executed one of the biggest terrorist attacks in the world has seen, Osama Bin Laden has been la last located. We can now bring justice to this terrorist that took the lives of hundreds. The mission will be soon accomplished. Initiate the raid promptly to prevent this escape. Select the raid button in the decision category to begin the operation. If not initiated in time, you may evade capture, requiring a start of the tracking process. Oh, crap. Wait, I don't catch these. I want to raid the compound. How do we ra get them? We got him! Okay, after successfully locating Bin Laden, a specialized unit has been sent to deal with him. The team was able to neutralize both Bin Laden's guards and the man himself, bringing a much needed justice to victims of terrorism and accomplishing a main mission in a war against terror. Wonderful. The notorious terrorist and international criminal, Osama Bin Laden, has finally been tracked down by Navy SEALs and confirmed to be dead. Now that all the information is successful, we know that assassination was planned by the CIA after a courier with a false identity manager tracked him down uh, in the Pakistan, in the city of Abbottabad. Currently, the Pakistani government has been blamed for hiding and is being protected by the international community is under investigation. The entire world can breathe a sigh of relief at the death of Al the Al-Qaeda leader, or the Navy SEALs bringing highly recognized as heroes. And rec rightly recognized. However, some mil Islamic militant groups, including Pakistani ones, vowed to avenge Bin Laden's death. Justice has been served. Down to go home, right? Since the Taliban insurgency is all ongoing, we'll lose a thousand political power. Since the reconstruction is still not finished, we'll lose 750 political power. Well then. Middle Eastern chess game. Um, We did our job. Keep Turkey by our side. Turkey is a nation of the border of the two different, two fully different civilizations. That's between Europe and Asia, in our case, one of the gates leading to the Middle East. Turkey is situated in good position. Recently, 
They have thoughts about distancing themselves from us. We'll make sure that they change their mind on this topic. We have 76. And second my security. I don't want to lower our coalition support. It's already not very much. I don't mind expending army XP. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Village stabilization patrol success. Our efforts to stabilize rural villages have been a resounding success. The patrols and villages have kept any criminals out or arrested them during the operation. Good job! Nice! So right now we're at 42% Taliban insurgency strength. Coalition support is at 27.5%. And reconstruction progress is okay. So good job. Nice. 32% is not bad. 12 point some. We, don't, we have six guys. We literally have three guys now. Here. Oh crap. Midterm results. Ooh. Hey, yeah, that's not good. We lost quite a few seats. Uh-huh. Well, that's not good. Well then. Does that affect any of this? Liberal? Conservative? No, not really. Alrighty. I also did grab this person too, so we get some more work on the air stuff, so. Uh-huh. We have, okay, a couple guys here. I keep doing all this stuff. We get political power out of it, which is great. A certain strength goes down, which is great. Support for coalition goes up, we get even more intelligence. Reconstruction is at 20% already, which is pretty nice overall. Um, village stabilization. Hopefully this goes well. We're gonna deploy patrols of secure villages. Engage your local leaders and build trust with the community. Senate, Afghan forces, no. Never mind. No, well, I already did the other one, so. Whatever. Night raids. Uh, Target night raids on the Taliban hideouts to disrupt their operations and gather intelligence. Never mind. Okay, so we didn't even get refunded of that stuff. Okay, that's not good. Can't do that one again. We need more soldiers. Hmm. <clears throat> Keep asking for more soldiers. Oh, we failed. Oh, that sucks. Bro. 37.7. Coalition support is better, at least. That's that. Um, humanize the prison system. We should submit multiple pieces of legislation aimed at breaking the influence that private companies hold over our prisons, as well as implementing a humanization process within our prisons. The matter of rehabilitation will also be heavily involved, as we'll push for a more comprehensive method of prison rehabilitation and parole to be enforced throughout the nation as well to both reduce the prison population and cut down on crime without sense of brutality. Prison conditions will be heavily audited to maximize prisoner safety and health concerns, as well as prioritizing proper prisoner education or to combat prisoner illiteracy, which has been rampant throughout the past couple of years. I really don't want to do these, since, I mean, it's looking decent now. Well, you don't like that much. It's an inadequate still. Um, we'll keep doing these, build arms factories, uh, expand this stuff. Decentralized government, we need more forces. But I still want to do all this stuff too. I want to do these two, I want to do whatever we can down there. A hey, substandard, that's all better. Map of 2003, basically. Can we get involved anywhere else, please? It's Iraq, Iraq, Syrian war. Uh, Democratic revolution in there. Romanian, Romanians won. Work with uh, workers' unions. One of the key promises for a campaign was to adhere to the working class. The uh, foundation is keystone of American industry and the economy. It's only proper that we work with the top representatives of the workers of the U.S. What? What do you mean it failed? Uh, hello? Unfortunately, the power of these trade unions has been greatly restricted over the past 50 years, with fears of anti-communism and McCarthyism leading to many union leaders to be persecuted and unions to be heavily shunned in American society. 
or worked to undo these damages. Under tenure, every American industrial worker, from a construction worker in Manhattan to factory worker in Chicago to a mechanic in Dallas, all while guaranteed rights, health care, and job security will not stop accomplishing this. Efforts to stabilize rural villages have been an unfortunate failure, with armed patrols being unable to deal with the root of crime in local villages being unfriendly to the presence of foreign ar armies. God. I hate Afghanistan. There's a lot of political power. Where are we at now? 45% is pretty good. 32% is not bad. Agricultural support. Bomb the caves. I like this one's good to do. It's guaranteed, and we don't lose anybody. Ooh, intelligence. Cave clearings. Yeah. I'm saving the large of the political power for our policy initiatives. Islak Sunka. Oh. How's that piece of Uh. Uproot corporate weeds. The USA, the American dream and practically the paradise of the Western world par excellence. Although our country is as great and glorious as its history, the current state of our interior, regarding health infrastructures, housing, generally the large corporations, is not the best of the best. Not at all. Therefore, uh, to free ourselves from the fold that tears our tag, and more importantly, the wallets of our people, we decided to count on the influence of these corporations, making them more affordable for the entire population. These darn corporation pimps need to submit to us for good. I don't want to lose any more support, though. You know what? We're going to lose a little bit of support. I'm fine with that, then. Screw it. This matters to me more. Because you need 100 anyway, just to get full support for us. Prison rehabilitation. Um, the prison system is far too immoral and inhumane. We must fix this at once if we want to see our nation move forward. The Prison Rehabilitation Act will overall the current prison system focus on punishment instead, oriented towards a facility that aids in healing criminal minds instead of punishing. I got more troops. Better. 37, 44%, 28%. That's not bad. Oh, God, I hate Afghanistan. How many troops we got? 13,000. It's not half bad. How many left? Uh, they're going to lose a lot of stability. And we lose political power. I don't want to do that. Do that one. Intelligence report. For Donald Trump, subject coming across in Cambodia. Recent intelligence has gathered from our field operatives and intercepted communication indicates an alarming escalation of political tension in Cambodia as the 2003 general election approaches. The Funi Sipak Party, which withdrew from the ruling coalition last September, has publicly called for a boycott of the upcoming elections, exacerbating the already volatile political environment. Sources within the Cambodian government and military suggest that the Funi Sipak Party party is planning a coup with the assistance of disloyal elements within the military. This information was corroborated by intercepted communications between key Funisipak parties and military officers, detailing their plans to disrupt the election and seize power. Supporting Funisipak's efforts will strategically weaken the communist regime and hold on Cambodia, thereby diminishing the influence of the Reds in Indochina. The conflict between Funisipak and the ruling parties intensifying daily, with both sides mobilizing supporters and resources in anticipation of any potential clashes. Our intelligence indicates that without timely intervention, Cambodia is on the brink of another civil war. This imminent threat to stability in the region necessitates immediate attention and action. Strengthening the Funis effect covertly will be crucial. We must also anticipate and prepare for Vietnamese intervention. Gardening the support of Thailand is essential to establish a strategic foothold in the region should war erupt. It's imperative that we continue to monitor the situation closely, maintain communication with our assets on the ground, and coordinate with our Thai allies to ensure the balance and favorable outcome in this evolving crisis. Okay. Just need more political power. But it looks like I've, I've, we've, we've been working through this. We're getting there. We saved Afghanistan from themselves. We only lost 61 people so far. We've got thousands of people in Afghanistan. We're helping out their army. The Taliban insurgency strength is getting way better. Coalition forces support is going up. Reconstruction is going up. So overall, I call us a W win for us. W, a W win. So, and now we've got a Cambodia that might just explode. So, I think I'm it there. I think we've done pretty darn well in this episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with the presidency of Donald J. Trump. Thanks for watching. And have a tremendous rest of your day.